Okay, in this video, we're going to learn and use the fundamental identities, okay? Um, and based on some given information, we're going to use these identities uh, to find some values of the other trig functions, okay? Um, an identity just means something is equal to this other thing, and we can use them interchangeably, okay? We can use a substitution property um, and calculate whatever we may be looking for, okay? So the first three... Um, Cosecant equals one over sine of theta. Well, what that means is cosecant and sine are always going to be reciprocals. All right? So just remember that. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals of one another. Okay? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Okay? So if you know cosine, you can always take the reciprocal of that and find secant. If you know secant, you can always take the reciprocal of that to find the cosine. They are always reciprocals. Okay? Uh, cotangent and tangent are reciprocals, okay? So if you know tangent, you can find cotangent. If you know cotangent, then you can find tangent, all right? Now, these last two, they're under the, uh, the reciprocal identities, um, you know, heading here, but we can also call these quotient identities. So tangent is the quotient of sine and cosine, all right? Because cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, we can just flip this, okay, take the reciprocal of this ratio here, and we get cosine over sine, okay? So the quotient identity for tangent is sine divided by cosine. The quotient identity for cotangent is cosine divided by sine, okay? Now, there's three Pythagorean identities, okay? They kind of look like the Pythagorean theorem, and we're not going to go over how we uh, could find these or how these were derived, um, but just know they're true. These are Pythagorean identities. These are true, okay? So the first one, uh, sine squared of any angle plus cosine squared of any angle equals 1. That's always true, okay? Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. And the final Pythagorean identity is 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared, okay? Now, just in case, you know, I've skipped over this, but this uh, symbol here is theta. It's the Greek letter theta. And it's a very common uh, variable to be used for angles, especially in trigonometry, okay? We'll use other Greek letters for the angle names as well. Um, an example one, which we're going to do in this video, we're going to use alpha, which is the Greek letter and the first letter in the Greek alphabet, okay? So let's kind of keep these in mind. We're going to use some of these to help us as we move ahead, okay? So looking at example number one here, given information, we are given that the cosine of alpha is three-fifths. Okay, we're also told that alpha, that angle, um, is located in quadrant four. Okay, so we're not talking about terminal points. We're not talking about any of that. We know the trig function cosine, and we're going to use these identities uh, to find the other five. Okay, all right, so we want to find sine. We want to find tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, so first thing I'm going to talk about is, well, we're located in quadrant four. So that tells me information, okay? Think back to what we learned just recently. If you're in quadrant four, then only the cosine and the secant are going to be positive, okay? The other four trig functions will be negative, and we need to keep that in mind as we move forward, okay? So first thing I'm going to do, and you can go in any order you want to. You can go in order, you know, the way it's written here, or you can go, you know, based on what you think is the best way. But I'm going to start off finding secant, Okay? The reason I'm going to find secant is because it's the reciprocal of cosine. So if the cosine is three-fifths, I can just do the reciprocal, five-thirds, and I have my secant. Okay? So that's one down really quickly. So understand when to use which identities. Okay? Next thing I can find, I know cosine and I know secant. Okay? If you'll look, I can't use any of these identities and find a missing piece because there's two variables okay, or no variables left in these, okay, so I, I can't use any of these yet, okay, what I can use is one of these or, or two of these Pythagorean identities, I could use this identity now to find sine, you know, because I already know the value of cosine, okay, or I could use this identity, because I know secant, to find the value of tangent, it is your choice, okay, I'm going to use the, I'm going to find the sine first, Okay, I'm going to use this identity uh, to find the value of sine. Okay, so sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha equals 1. All right, so let's substitute in what we know. We know the cosine value is 3 fifths. 
and then let's use some basic algebra to clean this up, okay? So what I've done here, I've squared the 3 fifths to get 9 over 25. I've gone ahead and gotten a common denominator over here on the right that's 25 over 25 because that's equal to 1. Okay, let's isolate sine squared. Okay, now I'm going to take the square root of both sides because that I, I need to solve for sine a, not sine squared of a. So when I take the square root, I get plus or minus 4 fifths. Okay, and that's where the quadrant comes into play. We said the other four trig functions will be negative. Cosine is positive. Secant is positive. The other four will be negative, okay? So I don't need the positive square root here. I need the negative square root. So the sine of alpha is going to be negative four-fifths, okay? So now that I know sine, I can understand that cosecant and sine are reciprocals, and I'm going to find cosecant next, okay? And I'm going to use that reciprocal identity. So if sine is negative four-fifths, we flip that, and cosecant of alpha is going to be negative five-fourths. Okay, so that one's easier, a lot less work, okay? Now, I know four of the six trig functions, so there's a lot of different ways that I could get to tangent and cotangent, okay? I could use these Pythagorean identities. You may want to use those uh, to practice with. I'm going to use one we haven't used yet. I'm going to use this quotient identity here to find tangent. I know sine and I know cosine, so I'm going to substitute those values in here and then simplify, Okay? So let's find tangent using that, okay? So we know the sine of alpha is negative four-fifths. We know the cosine of alpha is three-fifths, okay? I'm going to flip it and multiply, okay? This three-fifths, I need the reciprocal here because I'm changing division to multiplication. Notice these fives will cancel out because they're in different halves of the fraction when I'm multiplying, and that leaves me with my tangent value of negative four-thirds, okay? So we use the quotient identity um, to find that. Now that I know tangent, I can use the, uh, the reciprocal identity to find cotangent, and it's just going to be the reciprocal of this, and that's going to be negative three-fourths, okay? So that's how you use fundamental identities to find five different trig functions. You've got to be given some information. You've got to know at least one of the trig functions, in this case, and what quadrant the angle uh, is in, okay? So, you got to memorize these identities. You have to know those by heart. They are easy to look up if you do forget them, but I would try to memorize these. And, uh, and you know, it can be, it's a pretty cool thing uh, to see how all this kind of comes together. All right, so that's how we do that.